Now that we have a good sense of how to maximize or minimize a surface, we want to get into the applications of this and to see how we can solve problems to optimize an outcome. So we'll look at two different types of optimization. One is constrained and one is unconstrained. We'll first look at the constrained optimization approach. So imagine that we have some sort of objective, something that we want to minimize or maximize. We're going to refer to that as the objective function because mathematically speaking it's going to be an equation that we want to make its output value as large as possible. However, there's going to be some sort of constraint on that process which will prevent us from just picking any point on that surface but will typically be given as a constraint function. So if we imagine a paraboloid for instance and uh, this paraboloid has obviously its maximum point here, but suppose that I'm going to constrain that function. I'm going to say I only want to find the maximum value along that line. So that obviously prevents this from being the maximum because we have to limit ourselves to anywhere where this line intersects that paraboloid. And so depending on how this process goes, we may say, you know, this is the, this is the optimal value that you can find along this curve. And the goal is to determine what that point is. So as an example, just to get a sense of objective function and constraint function, suppose we have a company that wants to maximize its revenue, but it only has $100,000 to spend on machinery and its employee salaries each month. So inevitably, the more we could produce and the more we could sell, the better off our company will be. However, it's impossible to produce infinitely many units. So we can think about this $100,000 as this is our constraint. Our budget is $100,000. So we could think about this as the constraint uh, or related to the constraint function. In terms of what we want to do, the objective is to maximize its revenue. So the revenue function which we'll call f of x, y, that will be our objective function. And the constraint, which well, here we don't have enough information to write it, but we'll have some sort of constraint function that says, yeah, you can only spend $100,000. So in order to better understand this, let's take a look at an example. A neighborhood health clinic has a budget of $600,000 per quarter. The director of the clinic wants to allocate the budget to maximize the number of patient visits V, which is given as a function of the number of doctors D and the number of nurses N by V equals 1000 D to the 0.6 N to the 0.3. So this is actually a valid function, by the way. This is called a Cobb-Douglas model, which is often used in business practice. And if you want to go look more, uh, look more into this, you can certainly Google Cobb Douglas, C-O-B-B-D-O-U-G-L-A-S, separated by a hyphen. And so this, this is our model. And we know that a doctor gets $40,000 per quarter and nurses get $10,000 per quarter. So think about doctors is getting $160,000 per year and nurses is getting $40,000 per year. Well, our objective here is evident. It's to maximize the number of patient visits. So we want to maximize. Now we want to present this mathematically. What do we want to maximize? We want to maximize the output of this function, which I'll write as a V of D comma N equals 1000 d to the point 6 n to the point 3. So we want to find the biggest possible output of this. But we could just continue to make these numbers larger and larger. We could just keep increasing d and n, but the problem is we're limited by a budget and every doctor is going to cost us and every nurse is going to cost us, so we are limited to $600,000. Well, in terms of the number of doctors, every doctor is going to get paid $40,000. So that means that if I take 40,000 multiplied by the number of doctors I have, that will give me the total cost for hiring D doctors. But I also have to take into account nurses, which cost me 10,000 per quarter per nurse. And I have to multiply that by the number of nurses. And then I have to add these two things together. And that will give me the total amount that I spend. 
but the amount that I spend is limited to or less than or has to be less than or equal to the amount that I have for a budget, which is 600,000. Now, less than or equal to just simply means that I, I could spend less, but I have no more than $600,000 to spend. We also want to make the following observation that if I have $600,000 to spend and it is evident in my objective function that the more doctors and more nurses that I have will inevitably bring me more visits, then I want to make these as big as possible. And if I want to make these as big as possible, I am going to try to use up the $600,000. So realistically, to maximize, we want to use up all of our money, or I'll just say all of our budget. So we can rephrase this and we can say that yeah, maybe less than or equal to is not what I really want. What I really want is to say 40,000 D plus 10,000 N equals 600,000. And again, the reason for that is that the more money I have, the more doctors and nurses I can hire. And going back to our objective function, the more doctors I have and the more nurses I have, the bigger the output of the function will be, which is the number of visits. So the obvious question at this point is how do we find the maximum number of patients the health clinic can serve each quarter? Uh, what is the value of DNN that will make this happen? So there are two things that I need to keep in mind. Number one, I have to make sure that I don't go over budget. And number two, that the combination of the D and the N that I choose should make the number of visits as large as possible. So there's a bit of a trade-off. Uh, and what we need to do in order to maximize this is we need to find the highest points on the surface our surface being our objective function, such that 10,000x plus 40,000y equals 600,000. So here's the surface. Here's the 3D surface. This guy here is my f of xy. And then if I limit myself to just the points along the surface where g of x, y, my constraint function, in this case that's the 10,000 x plus 40,000 y, where that is equal to 600,000. Now I could, I could focus on areas where we have less than, where we spend less than that, but that would constitute this little triangular looking region here. But if I pick any point within that region, I'm not going to be able to, to maximize the number of visits because well, that means I'm going to hire fewer doctors and fewer nurses than I'm able to. So I really just want to focus on that blue line. And you can see here, uh, this is an output from Wolfram Alpha, that that right there is actually the maximum. And you can kind of see the curvature here, that that is the highest point on that surface when we're constrained to having to lie along the line g of x, y equals 600,000. So we need, in order to find or to better understand how this works, we need to be able to formulate some mathematical statements. Um, one way in which we could do this problem is to reduce this 3D problem to a 2D problem. And that would involve making some substitutions. But we don't really want to go that route because this method we want to make robust enough to where we could use in any situation. Now in order to do this, we're going to make an important mathematical observation. We've studied the gradient vector, and the gradient vector is, uh, is the vector that points in the direction of maximal rate of change. So given any point on a, uh, in the xy plane, then at every single point within the xy plane, the gradient will always point in the direction of maximal rate of change. So imagine that we're, the z-axis is pointing up or towards you into the screen and that we have some sort of three-dimensional surface that we're looking down upon and that gradient vector will always point in the direction of steepest descent. So another important observation is that the gradient vector always points in the direction of maximal rate of change. 
Thus, it points directly at the next highest contour. Uh, so why is that? Why does it, if we have a contour plot on here that maybe, yeah, I don't know, maybe looks like something like this, and this might be z equals 10, and this might be z equals 20, how do we know that this points in the highest? Well, it's, it points in the direction of maximal rate of change. That means that it's going to take us to the next highest elevation as quickly as possible. The shortest distance between any two points is the length of the straight line between them. Thus, the fastest way to get to a higher elevation is to move directly towards the next contour in a straight line. So this angle here between, if we were to zoom in on this contour right about there, we would find out that these two lines are perpendicular to one another. And that's the idea of local linearity, and we're going to demonstrate that next with a three-dimensional surface. So here we have a, a, a plot of a three-dimensional surface and its corresponding contour plot. And if we look down on it, we can see that there's the contour and there's the corresponding two-dimensional flattened contour. And you can see that all of these contours that are to the right of that are contours that are higher up in elevation. And here what we can see is we can see that contour projected down onto the xy plane. So all of these points have the same altitude, if we were to project directly up to the curve, to the surface rather, then those would all lie along the same z value, the same elevation. Now the gradient vector, this blue vector, points in the direction of maximal rate of change. So you can see that the gradient of f at the point, so we're using p, and p is right now the point 0.76 for x, 0.3 for y, the, direct, the derivative in the x direction is 1.53 units of z per unit of x, and the derivative in the y direction is negative 0.68 units of z per unit of y. So as we zoom in on this contour, you can kind of see that right around that region that is perpendicular, but if I were to zoom in, I would be able to see that more clearly. Uh, so let me go ahead and zoom in on that contour. And as I zoom in further and further and further, we're getting to the point of local linearity where what started off as a curve appears to be a straight line. And we can certainly agree that that appears to be pretty perpendicular. That blue vector, that gradient vector, appears to be pretty perpendicular to our contour. And in fact, it points uh, as directly towards the next contour, which in a straight line, would take us there. That would take us there as quickly as possible. So with that said, that makes an important observation that we're going to need. And it doesn't really matter what, what surface we pick. We can make this x squared plus y squared. And we could again think about that as the contour ring. And if we zoom in further and further and further, we see that that blue vector and that red contour are perpendicular to one another. So there's the, there's, there's the visual of it. Again, that is going to be an important thing going forward. So now let's investigate f of x, y, and g of x, y. Now what I have plotted here in Desmos is our constraint. 40,000, sorry, 10,000 x, or 40,000 x plus 10,000 y equals $600,000. And that's this straight line. It's in two dimensions because it only involves two variables. And it's a two-dimensional function. It has nothing to do with the number of visits. And then what I've plotted here is our objective function. But notice that I have that equal to v. The number of visits is what I get to control, provided that I fall under the budget. So as I begin changing the number of visits, right now it's zero, so it's not very interesting, but as I begin changing the number of visits, you can see that along this red curve, every single point along this red curve satisfies 3,100 visits. So for example, if I picked uh, my, I don't know, this point right here, then to hire about 10 doctors and obviously what appears to be under one nurse, I would be under my budget, because this is my budget constraint, I'm under that line, and I would be able to achieve 3,100 visits. But of course, that's not going to be very satisfactory because after all, I'm way under my budget. So as I begin changing this, you can see all the points under the curve, under the black line, still satisfy my budget. Anything over that and those X and Y combinations will achieve a 
over budget. And we'll talk about that next.